today, we're talking about one of the most deceptively simple clauses in SQL, and it's also one of the most misunderstood, and that is group by. It looks easy until you end up with a bunch of errors and you don't know why and you mess up all of your interviews. And trust me, I used to get that infamous group by error all the time when I was a newbie data analyst. So I'm going to save you so much trouble today. In this video, I'm going to make sure that never happens to you, especially not in an interview. I'll go over the basics of group by and how it works behind the scenes, how to group by multiple columns in the same query. And you're going to want to stay to the end because I'm going to show you the number one most common error caused by group by and how to fix it. And I'm also going to show Show you the most common interview question by group by and you can steal my exact query by the end you'll not only be a pro on how group by actually works but you'll also know how to avoid all the errors and don't forget to subscribe come on i know you want to okay first let's go over what group by actually is and why we need to know how to use it as a data analyst as a data analyst we deal with so much data daily sometimes millions of rows in one output and it would take us a really long time honestly probably years to go through every single row look at the result and then try to come up with some sort of insight around it. That would take honestly forever, don't do that. So we have to learn how to summarize data by different categories to really tease out those trends. And that's where group by comes into play. The group by clause in SQL is basically a way to partition or segment our data into different groups. And then we can identify trends within each group. So for example, maybe we separate all of our data by category. We have category A, category B, and category C. And then we can perform different descriptive statistics and analyses within each group. So in that case, we take that category and then group by each of the different category values and summarize the results within each one. And now I'm gonna explain it to you like you're five years old, because let's be honest, we all wanna learn data that way, right? Imagine you have a big pile of candies. You have blue, red, and yellow. And we wanna count all the candies in each color. So we can group our candies or our data by color. We can have blue, red, and yellow. And then we're gonna go to each color, count them up, count them up, count them up. And then in our output, we're gonna have a count for blue, a count for red, and a count for yellow. And we do the exact same thing with our data. The syntax is actually super easy. The hard part is understanding how group by changes the granularity of our output and kind of reshapes and transforms our data sets. Because if you do it wrong, you're gonna get this infamous error I keep talking about. By the way, if you're brand new to SQL, make sure you check out my free intro to SQL course below. We're gonna build your first SQL mini project in only 30 minutes. It's perfect for complete newbies, but if you already have some SQL experience, you might want to head on over to my intermediate course. In that course, I'll help you upskill to the next level, build a portfolio and get job ready. Okay, let's just do the basic syntax and get our hands dirty and dive in. Right now I'm coding in Snowflake. This is where I store my data for YouTube and my SQL courses. And I just pulled the orders table, select star from table, just so I can show you everything this table has in it. We have order ID, product ID, customer ID, order date, ship shipping status, payment method. And then we also have this price column, which we can use for a revenue for that order. And then a bunch of other columns too. Now I'm gonna show you the basic syntax of group by, and we're gonna count the number of orders for each customer because this orders table can have duplicate customer IDs if a customer has multiple orders. So we're gonna count all of the orders for each customer. So we're gonna group by customer ID, all the different customer IDs are gonna have a different group. And then within each customer ID, we're gonna count up all the orders. It's just like our candy example from before. So I already said we're gonna group by customer ID, but what needs to go in our select statement? So let's pull in customer ID so we can see that in our output. And then what do we need to do for each customer ID. We need to count the number of orders. And there's a couple of different ways we can do this. So we can do the count function and say count order ID. That way we're counting all of the order IDs. And this is a perfectly fine solution. But since order ID is the primary key of the table and we know it doesn't have any null values, instead of counting order ID, we can just say count star to count the rows. And this is the way that I would do it. And now we have a count of all the orders for every single customer ID. So we can see that this first customer ID has four orders. This one here has two orders. This one here has three orders. And this one here has one order. We count 
selected each row or order for each customer. This is a great way to summarize data because before we had 5,000 rows for 5,000 different orders, and now we have 3,352 rows. But what did we actually do with group by and what's different now? So we actually changed the granularity of the table and not the actual table. The original table is still the same, but this output that we just created has a different granularity than the original table we pulled it from. What's granularity? Granularity is the size of the data or what level you're kind of looking at. Think about a boulder versus a tiny grain of sand. A grain of sand is gonna be more granular and small than a boulder. So instead of just keeping the orders table as is and leaving it on the order level granularity, we went up a level and summarized it on the customer level. So now instead of every row being a completely different order, every row in this new output is a completely different customer because we aggregated all of those orders onto the customer level. And a really cool thing about group by is that whatever column or columns, we'll get to that a little later, whatever column you group by, it's gonna automatically be deduped or distinct in the output. So that means if you group by customer ID, you know that the output is gonna have distinct customer IDs with no duplicates. So since we know that this output has 3,352 rows and we grouped by the customer ID, we know that that's the exact number of customers we have in our orders table. So you never have to use distinct or dedupe when using group by. And another fun fact about group by while I'm at it is that group by also includes nulls as a grouping category. We don't have any nulls in this example because it's impossible to have a customer ID that is null in our orders table. But if you ever have nulls in a categorical variable, that's gonna show up as a different grouping category in your output. Group by can also be combined with having. If you're not familiar with having yet, it's totally fine, but I'm gonna show you real quick how we can add having after group by to actually filter out our results. Having is used to filter out groups from your output. So if you're ever filtering an aggregated value like num orders, for example, you're gonna have to use having to filter that. So what if we wanna filter for num orders is greater than three? Now it's only gonna show us the customers that have more than three orders. I know that may have seemed like a lot so far, but I promise we're gonna practice way more. This is one of the really common interview questions with group by, by the way. I replaced the customer ID with order ID and both the select statement and the group by. So now instead we're counting the number of rows for each order ID, or in other words, we're counting how many orders for each order ID. And you might be wondering, there shouldn't be more than one order associated with each order ID because order ID is the primary key of the table and there shouldn't be multiple orders with the same order ID. And yes, you're right, in a perfect world, but sometimes in the real world, things get messy and messed up. So that's why this is a really common interview question. So we can actually do a count star and count the number of orders for each order ID, and then we can use having to filter for more than one order. So I'm gonna run this query and it's gonna show us which order IDs have more than one order associated with them. And the output is null, which is good in this case because we shouldn't have any duplicate order ID values since it's the primary key of the table. Using this exact query in format, to check for duplicates in a table is a super, super common interview question. So make sure you save this video and write this query down right now. And of course we can change out the grouping column in the select statement and group by literally any column we want. So we can change this to status and now we're counting the number of orders for each status. But if you change something in the select statement, you also have to make sure you change it in the group by and vice versa, or you're gonna get an error. And this is the infamous group by error that I was talking about because anytime you use a column in a query with group by like this, it either has to be in the group by clause or aggregated in the select statement. So right here, I'm getting an error because I'm calling on status in the select statement, but I'm not aggregating it or grouping by it. I'm grouping by order ID, which isn't even in the query. So if I change this to status, the error is gonna go away because now it's happy. I'm grouping by status and it's also in the select statement unaggregated. So if you're using group by and you have columns in your select statement, you have to aggregate those columns in the select statement with an aggregate function or or you have to group by them and add them to group by. And another little fun fact too, is that you can actually use the column number in the group by instead of the column name. So instead of status, I can say one, since it's the first column in my select statement, and I'm gonna get the same result. I actually like the shorthand method better because it's just less clutter and less words, but it also makes it easier if you change this column in your select statement, you don't have to remember to also go change it in group by. So it does cut down on the amount of errors as long as you remember that you do have that in group by down below. Sorry for the brief interruption. It's time for my coffee break. 
Now that we feel pretty comfortable with the basic syntax of group by, I bet you're wondering about all the possibilities. And I know you're dying to know, Jess, can we group by multiple columns? And my answer is, of course. So now we can throw customer ID into our query as well. We already grouped by customer ID. We just grouped by status. Now we can combine them into one query and actually group by customer ID and status. So now it's gonna go to every customer and within each customer also group by status to get the counts and the totals. Let's try running this to see if it works, ha ha ha. Oh man, an error. This is so unexpected, how could this be? It's because I set y'all up, okay? I'm trying to teach y'all something. So the error says that we have our status column in the select clause, and it's neither in an aggregate nor in the group by clause. Remember what I just got done telling you? If you put a new column in the select clause, it has to either be aggregated or in the group by. I mean, think about it. We either have to also group by that column or we have to aggregate it to be on the same level as the other thing we're grouping by. So what should we do? We're gonna add it to the group by. And yes, we can just add a comma and two. That way we're grouping by both customer ID and status, columns one and two in our select statement. And I'm actually gonna order this too by customer ID so I can find an example with multiple statuses. So this customer right here has an order in delivered and returned. If we were to remove status from this query, then both of these counts would be summed into the same single row output for that customer. So we would have customer 102 two, nine, four, eight, six, nine. And the total would be two orders for that customer. But since we also grouped by status, we kind of broke it down into another level. So now the granularity of this output isn't just on the customer level. It's like a level deeper, it's customer and status. So it's gonna have a row for every single customer and status combination. And we can see that we have 4,347 rows in this output. So it is less than the total number of orders because we are summarizing the data and aggregating into customer status combos, but it's still more rows than when we just grouped by customer, which was I think 3,000 something rows, because now we're also breaking it down into statuses within each customer because we're grouping by two things, two columns. And so far we've only looked at examples where we're counting specifically counting rows, but you can actually use group by with any of your aggregate functions. So you can use it with sum, average, standard deviation, median, min, max, any sort of aggregate function you can use with group by. And this query right here is a really common example in data analytics. This is a great way to find descriptive statistics. So you're basically just taking an overall look at your data, looking at the basic statistics and trends, the range of your values, the average values. And it's honestly really easy. All you have to do is just put your price or your revenue column inside of the aggregate functions. And now we're able to assess our total revenue, our average revenue, standard deviation of all of our revenues, our median revenue and min and max, which is pretty crazy considering this is only a few lines of code. That's a lot of insights. And here I grouped by product ID. So that way we could get descriptive statistics for all of our products. And we can see here that we have 15 rows, which means that we have 15 distinct different products. And for each of these products, now we can understand the revenue, the average revenue, and then we can kind of track these and compare them against each other. But I bet you're wondering what are all these product IDs and what type of products do we even have in this fake hypothetical company? Well, we can actually join to our products table. So let's join in our products table on, we're actually gonna use an alias to rename our orders table as O, and we're gonna rename our products table as P and these are called aliases. And we're gonna join on o.productid equals p.productid. If you're not familiar with joins, go watch my video on joins, but basically we're taking the orders table and the products table, and we're gonna horizontally glue them together and zip them up by matching between the product IDs in both tables. The product ID is the common key between both tables, so we're able to match up all the rows between them and pull insights from both tables into one output. And since we now have access to the product table, we can actually pull in our product name. So P dot product name, and let's try running this. I love the look of uncertainty when I said that because I know that there's some errors here we're gonna have to fix. But errors are a great way to learn SQL. So I'm gonna debug them with you so you can actually see how to fix them. Okay, the first error we have is ambiguous column name product ID. It's referring to this one here in the select statement because we refer to a product ID and we say, give us the product ID, but should we use the one in the orders table? 
or the products table. And technically it doesn't matter here since we did an inner join and we only kept rows that do have matches between both tables. So it doesn't really matter which one we use, but I'm gonna use the orders table for now. And now we have another error. So this says P dot product name is in the select clause, but it's not in an aggregate function or in the group by clause. This is the infamous error that we have seen throughout this entire video coming back to haunt us again. Oh no, God! So we have a choice. We can either aggregate product name or we can put it in the group by clause. So do we wanna also group by product name or do we wanna aggregate it? And I'll be honest, it's kind of a blanket fix if you just aggregate it and you just say min or something crazy, but like it doesn't make sense conceptually, right? We don't really want the min of the product name. We just wanna group by it in addition to the product ID, because there should only be one product name for each ID anyway. So it's kind of just like grouping by product. So we're gonna add it to group by. So now we're gonna group by product ID and product name, which should have a one-to-one -one relationship anyway. So it shouldn't really matter or make any sort of a difference. And now we just debugged our two errors. And now we have this beautiful output, all of these descriptive statistics for each product. And we also joined in the products table to pull in the product name. Now we actually know what the heck we're doing. Oh, it looks like we have backpack sunscreen, shoes, serums. I didn't even know it, but apparently I'm running some sort of outdoor hiking business. Last thing I'm gonna show you is the most common interview question. And that is not just grouping things in SQL because interviewers and companies love to ask about grouping by different things in SQL and aggregating and summarizing, but it's grouping by date in SQL. I swear one of the most common interview questions is add up all the revenue by date, by month, by day, by year. It's just such a common thing to ask because it involves grouping, aggregation, and sometimes date manipulation. So make sure you know exactly how to do this. So let's refresh our memory real quick. In our orders table, we have the order date field. That's the date field that we're gonna aggregate by. And let's aggregate by month. Let's make it a little interesting. So we're gonna use our order date column. We could count orders, count star, but let's actually make it more interesting. And let's do some of the price column. So that's gonna be our revenue. I'll say our total revenue since we're aggregating. Then we can group by the first column, which is order date. So now we're gonna have the sum of the price the total revenue for each date. But oopsies, it looks like I forgot that our order date column is actually date times. So we have these timestamps. So it's actually grouping by every single date and timestamp. So we're not actually doing very much grouping here. So what can we do to get rid of the timestamps? Because we wanna aggregate by month, right? So how can we get rid of the timestamps, get rid of the days and just aggregate on the month level? So we're gonna use one of my favorite date functions in SQL, date trunk. So you type the date trunk function and then you type what level you wanna truncate the date. In this case, we wanna truncate on the month level, but you can also put year, you can put day. So basically what date trunk does is it's gonna help us standardize all of our date times and it's gonna help us get rid of the timestamps and the days, basically anything more granular than the level we specify. So we specified month, so it's gonna get rid of days, timestamps, and anything smaller and more granular. And it's gonna standardize all of our date times to the month level so we can aggregate by the month. And by the way, the syntax here differs so much based on what SQL dialect you're using. So if this exact way doesn't work, just Google ChatGPT and see what works in the platform you're coding in. And boom, now we can see that it got rid of all the timestamps and the days because it just reset all the timestamps to zero and all the days to the first day of the month. And now we have all of our revenue summed up for each month year combo. And we can turn this into a chart and it's already sorting this by date for us and everything. So now we can track our revenue over time for every single month. And it does keep the different years as well. So we have April 2024 here and April 2025 here. And that is one of the most common interview questions with group by. So now you know how group by works, how to group by multiple columns, how to avoid the most common error and how to answer the most common interview question with group by. But of course, to really excel as a data analyst, pun intended, you're going to need to know a little bit more in SQL. So head on over to my next video and we're going to go over more SQL stuff. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and say hi in the comments. Sending you lots of big data energy. Bye.